My name is Therese and I'm from The Beat. Um, so first off, Simon, I um, just want to talk a little bit about how you got involved in this project, it being your feature debut. Can you talk a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, so <clears throat> obviously I've done video game commercials up to this point and the, um, you know, my agent just, it was, it's fairly uncomplicated actually. My agent sent me the script. Um, there was a some really key ingredients within the script and, and the, that I felt that actually if it can be done a certain way that I think it could be really successful. And so I had a, had a, a point of view on that and I met with the people involved and I guess they shared the same point of view. So um, it, it, it wasn't, you know, the process was really about trying to, for me, it was trying to create this and really bring about a very large scale, respectful cinematic version of it. And that's, that's what I wanted to do was I actually wanted to create that rather than change any fundamentals within it. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to take it into a space that's not really been before. And the guys at New Line really shared that they would wanted to do the same thing. And once we sort of all started talking about it, it became a pretty sort of um, effortless, um, well, there was effort involved, but there were, it became a, a cohesive creative group that we all sort of felt in lockstep. So once that got going, then, um, then it, was, it was a great experience. Amazing. And so obviously Mortal Kombat is such a, a property with such a massive fan base behind it was it intimidating for you to take it on as a project and how were you able to approach it so that fans both old and new could sort of relate to it yeah i i didn't find it intimidating I, i'd done some commercial i'd done uh, some commercials for halo and for playstation and call of duty in the past and what i learned out of though of that experience i'm working on those was that the fans knew a lot, the fans cared a lot, and the fans really want to believe. They really, and I used to play a lot of video games, so I understand that feeling of immersion in a world, in a, and it's very different to a, to a cinematic experience. It's, it's a full sort of brain immersion, and you, you live and breathe it. So I, so I, and out of that experience, I, I really sort of had a great respect for for gamers and for the fans of of any title, but specifically this title because I was working on it. And from that point, it was about knowing what to worry about because I knew it would connect with the fans and I knew the things that they cared about. And it was really just a matter of just staying on track and keeping that respect level high across the board. And a lot of the time, a lot of the things I would be saying on set and was about, no, this really matters. This little moment here, this, you know, whatever it was, this, you know, people are coming here. There's a the percentage of people come to the cinema just to see Sonia. So Sonia has to be brought into the film the right way. There's a certain amount of people that are just going to come into Jack's as their favorite. So Jack's needs to be respected. And so it was, it was really, I didn't really find it intimidating because I felt like, I felt like as long as we really put a lot of attention and time into caring and loving these characters and making sure they, they were able to have their, their moment and have their time and be balanced correctly. I thought if we could do that, then I think we might be able to, you know, it'll, might be able to pull it off. So. Gotcha. And, um, there are some intense action scenes in this movie. Um, you know, how did you guys go about including those like iconic Mortal Kombat fatalities? And can you talk about filming those and incorporating elements from the games into the film? Yeah. So Greg Russo, the writer, um, he early on had sort of pegged a few of the key fatalities that, that he felt he knows the game very well. And he, 
said, no, I think, you know, he, he, is, he, he wrote them into the script. And then as we started to work out how to, we were going to make these things, a couple, one changed just because of lots of other story reasons and so forth. But it was this sort of, um, we pre-planned it. And then when we got to the fights, each fight had to do a certain number of things. So I storyboarded the whole film and then we did what was what we sort of called the fight graph. And we isolated where all the fights were in the in the whole blueprint. And then we we looked at each of those fights and said, right, what ha- what is the story we're telling here that threads through? What's the character development in here? What is it stylistically we can do in this one that we haven't done in this one so that we don't get fight fatigue? We're building character and we're telling the story through through the fights themselves. Then once we had that organised, it allowed the fight choreographer, Chan Griffin and, and Carl Gardner, the stunt coordinator, it allowed them and their team to really just go for it. And what I was really measuring was stylistic, uh, the feel of it, where the camera, I kept saying to them, you're not allowed to use any crazy wide angle lenses. I don't want camera moves just for the sake of camera moves. It needs to be about storytelling and it needs to be somewhat uncomplicated because I don't want to be cutting away from stuff. Let it just be about character and let it be about their power. You know, we, we cast a lot of very, very good martial arts fighters. So let's just see them do their thing. And so the conversations we had around fights were fantastic because it was just this sort of constant balancing act of does it have that? Does it have that? Some of them were, the guys did longer fights, but as we, and they would do a fight viz and basically they'd shoot it on their, on their soundstage where they lived for a year and they shot them all on video. <clears throat> then we would analyze them and study them. And I would say, look, we need to add that there. And that's not clear. And that's amazing. And that's awesome. And then we, we were constantly sort of just working on them and, um, and it was just a it was just a, a rolling process of that, and what the what the stunt team achieved. Kyle and Chan did the most incredible job. So I just want to thank you for your time and thank you for speaking with me. And um, I hope everybody goes out and watches this movie because it was it was very fun to watch. Great, I'm pleased to hear it. We thank I you. wanted to make it fun. <laughs> <laughs> it was very fun. <laughs>